And we're thankful for Terry Dixon for sharing with us in music these three weeks. So last week, we looked at Psalms of Orientation, which is probably what we think about most when we think about Psalms, when we think about scripture, when we think about our faith. They are for those mornings that we wake up and it kind of just spills out of our mouth. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. God loves me. I'm created, as we heard last week, just a little bit lower than the angels. And honestly, God, what's not to love? But then there are those other 200 or so mornings out of the year. When we wake up, or when I wake up, and I have to kind of do a mental calculation in my head with the world, including myself and including God, be better off or worse off if I get out of bed. Maybe, maybe I should just stay here for the day. And so part of our faith and part of the Psalms is a matter of, of bold faith, of, of praising God in the midst of those feelings anyway. And that's important. It's bold and it's courageous. But the problem is sometimes that we, that we get in a place where we deny what is oftentimes the reality of life. And the reality of life is this. There are lots of times when bad things happen. And there's lots of times when we feel bad about those bad things that happen. And there's lots of times that we feel bad even when there aren't necessarily bad things that happen. And a lot of times what faith and especially what Christian faith has done in response to that is to say that those feelings in those circumstances are actually a lack of faith. And what we have to do to practice our faith is to pretend that those things aren't a reality of our life. And so often we end up, and I'm going to tr try to share this here, and I don't see it yet. There's a cartoon, cartoonist that I follow. His name is David Hayward. And he is, um, he writes a cartoon called The Naked Pastor. And um, this is one that he, that he had this week that I thought was particularly appropriate. We end up in a place where there's no room in our faith for feelings of, of sadness. And there's an incoherence between what we proclaim and what we are experiencing. And the wonderful things about scripture and about the Psalms in particular is that it does allow for us a place to express the shame and the unworthiness in the sadness, in the anger that we might feel. In these Psalms of lament, where we are able to, to feel the pain of what we are experiencing and to express that and to release it. I spend a lot of time with, with folks that are, that are grieving, grieving the the, the death of a loved one or, or grieving a change 
in life. And a model that I found helpful is by a gentleman named William Warden, who's done a lot of work with grief. And the model that he uses in all these things are, are just models, they're tools. But he talks about the four tasks of grief. And the second of those four tasks is to allow ourselves to feel and even allow ourselves to move toward the pain of grief. We live in a society that so often tells us to ignore that the pain that we're feeling and to ignore the reality of our life. And there's a fine line, but it's the difference, for example, of saying a pandemic such as COVID is something that's bad and is detrimental to us. But we as a people can gather together and move through it. The difference between that and denying that it exists or denying how bad it is. It's important to root ourselves in reality. The only way through our grief in our pain is to allow ourselves to feel it. And that's what the Psalms of Lament do. It's what Walter Brueggemann, the, the Hebrew scripture scholar calls Psalms of disorientation. So last week we talked about Psalms of orientation where we praise God and we're confident in God's love for us. We're confident that as long as we follow the rules and do what's right and keep a positive attitude, that things are going to go well for us. But then we stumble upon those times in life where that's not our experience of reality. And Walter Brueggemann sees those as the Psalms of, of disorientation, where we call out to God and say, God, are you still there? He splits these into two categories. There's, there's personal Psalms, of lament, and then there's corporate psalms of lament. And there's a structure to them that I, I want to go through briefly. I don't want to turn this into a, a Hebrew lit class, but I think this is an important because if we allow it to, it gives us structure that we might be able to fit what we're feeling into. So it begins with, with an address to God. Is in, the, is in the psalm that, that Susan just read for us. Long enough, God. You've ignored me long enough. I don't know about you, but, but when Susan read that psalm, when we were recording it on Friday, just a little pitch to, is as we are able, as we're engaging scripture, to read it out loud sometimes. It's a, it's a living word. I had picked this psalm out several weeks ago for this series. And then last Sunday, I had picked this particular version by Eugene Peterson to use. And then Susan and I sat down on Friday with Zoom to record this and she read it. And I was like, shoot, yes. That has oftentimes been the experience of my life. So this, this address to God, God is near. We can, we can bring our concerns to God. We can get angry at God. And then the complaint, this is what's going on, God. This isn't right. What I'm experiencing, I don't want to experience. This is what is wrong. Listen to this complaint from Psalm 10, which lately is one of my favorite Psalms. God, are you avoiding me? Where are you when I need you? Full of hot air, the wicked are hot on the trail of the poor. Trip them up, tangle them up in their fine-tuned plots. The wicked are windbags. The swindlers have foul breath. The wicked snub God, their noses stuck high in the air. Their graffiti are scrawled on the walls. Catch, if, catch us if you can, God is dead. They care nothing for what you think. 
If you get in their way, they blow you off. They live, they think, a charmed life. We can't go wrong. This is our lucky year. They carry a mouthful of hexes. Their tongues spit venom like adders. They hide behind ordinary people, then pounce on their victims. They mark the luckless, then wait like a hunter in a blind. When the poor wretch wanders too close, they stab him in the back. There's the complaint. There's God, this is what is wrong. And then there's the petition. Here, God, is what I want you to do about it. Long enough, God. I've thrown myself headlong into your arms. I'm celebrating your rescue. The petition, here, God, is what I want you to do about my complaint. And then there's another part. What the psalmists oftentimes do is they give God motivation as to why God should answer their petition. I love that. Isn't that brazen and bold? Sometimes it's because the psalmist sees themselves as innocent. I am righteous, God. You need to come and rescue me. Sometimes the psalmist does recognize their guilt and they're able to say, you know what? I've screwed up, but I'm sorry. I'm repentant. God, come and rescue me. And sometimes they'll put it on God, God's self. The psalmist will say, God, if you don't rescue me from this, I'm not going to be around to offer you praise anymore. You need to help me. And sometimes the psalmists speak to, to God's reputation. God, if you allow me to suffer like this, what are the people around me who hear me worship you going to think about you? You need to come and fix this. And then sometimes there's a little bit added to the end. There's an there's a imprecation. There's a call for vengeance. I'm personally not sure what to do with those parts, but I'm glad they're there because it recognizes how we so often feel when we feel like we've been wronged. An example of a corporate song of lament is Psalm 137. The people of Israel had been conquered by Babylon. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and there we wept when we remembered Zion. On the willows there we hung our harps, for there our captors asked us for songs, and our tormentors asked for mirth, saying, sing us one of those songs of Zion. How could we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. Let my tongue cling to the root of my mouth. If I do not remember you, if I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy, remember, O Lord, against the Edomites, the day of Jerusalem's fall, how they said, tear it down, tear it down, down to its foundations. O you daughter of Babylon. You devastator, happy shall they be who pay you back what you have done to us. Happy shall they be who take your little ones and dash them against the rock. There's a place where it is able to be expressed. The darkest feelings in the most intense angers of our hearts. Now, here's the thing about these psalms of lament, these songs, these prayers of lament. 
there is a recognition that we can bring even the worst parts of what's happening to us and the worst parts of who we are to God. And I know that I know, I know beyond what I know, that God inhabits the prayers of God's people. We can bring these to God. And now here's where a lot of pastors might say, we can just bring these things to God and, and leave them there and not worry about them anymore. That hasn't been the experience of my life in my work in my ministry. An interesting thing in these psalms, so the psalms begin with these pleas, they end with praise, but never in these psalms do we hear God respond. Now, something must happen to move the songwriter from plea to praise, but they're not here. They're in other places in scripture. In fact, some scholars think that that, that part was taken out and put in other parts of scripture, such as the prophets, when we hear the voice of God, when we hear the response of God to God's people, but they're not here. So yes, we bring these laments to God, but then I believe that we also act. I bring these feelings of sadness and anxiety to God. But then I also go about getting the help that I need. Maybe that's calling and talking to a friend. Maybe that's picking up the phone and taking the step and taking the risk of, of talking to a professional about how I'm feeling. Yesterday was World Mental Health Day. We have so many resources available to us and, and we're able more than we were before to, to talk about how we're feeling to people and to be loved and to be accepted. I, I take my problems and my circumstances to God, but I still might get out a piece of paper, write down what the issue is, and then write down, sketch out some steps that I might be able to take to resolve that issue. I bring to God what's happening in my family with, with my friends, but yet I'm still able to, to pick up the phone and call someone or write them a note. Today is not only Pastor Appreciation Day, it's, it's also coming out Sunday. And I know we seem to have a day for everything these days, but what a great reminder of, for us of the small things that we can do to make a difference in someone's life. And maybe on this coming out day, it's, it's calling or writing a note to someone that you know that is in the LGBTQ community and say, thank you for being true to who you are and the courage that you've shown in being who you are. I appreciate that. Maybe it's calling someone and, and that's going through a difficult transition of life and just asking them how they're doing. Yes, we get angry at God and we say how long and we say, why do the evil prosper? Why are people hungry? But even in those prayers, we act. We can't fix everything, but we can make a difference. We can offer somebody a meal and a shower on a Tuesday night. We can get out and we can vote to make a difference. Voting begins next, a week from tomorrow, October 19th, and hopefully we all have a plan to cast our vote. We can't do everything, but we can sit down with our police officials in Palm Beach County and encourage them to begin a program of, of tracking all the stops that they make to root out any problems that might be there. We bring our laments to God. God inhabits those prayers. God's shoulders are broad enough if we might be anthropomorphic for a moment. 
to bear the deepest grief in the most intense anger, even vengeance. And then we sit, we recognize God's presence in the midst of all of those issues and feelings. And then we get up off our mat and join God in seeking to resolve those issues and making a difference in our world. Amen.